In this day and age of the exact same lifeless corporate art style throughout most modern digital apps and services, most of which don't even offer a lot besides the bare minimum and some feature no one's gonna use, one may start to think about the internet that once was. Back when it was just another thing in your computer besides Minesweeper and MS Paint where you could do so many different and new things and everything looked so diverse yet it wasn't something too distracting that would make you revolve your entire life around it. <clears throat> And I could talk about this era of the internet I mostly grew up on for hours and believe me someday I will, but today I'd like to talk about one specific part of this old web, the remains of which are still seen today, and while some left, others took their place. And I'm talking about chat services. Most other videos that tackle the topic of old chat services go along the lines of oh my god this is so old, can you believe anyone used this, dial up was so bad and then proceed to use this exact sound. And you know what, that's fine, that's a very normal type of thing to do in order to capture the attention of nostalgic millennials, but I'm not a nostalgic millennial, I'm one of these things. And yeah sure, I'm younger than the Game Boy Advance and the PSP and the Xbox 360 by a few months, but it doesn't mean I didn't live this era. I mean it was more this era, but I'm gonna take a look at the chat services I and many others grew up with, some of which you foreigners have never even heard of, and find out what happened to them. And well, let's start with the big guy, the big blue ass that led to too many Minecraft group chats because we didn't know we could just use the same one more than once. Yeah, I'm talking about Skype, the love child of Swedish, Danish and Estonian developers. And yeah, these people were really making some fun stuff with technology around this era, with some nerd here making Linux, some other nerds nearby working on Nokia, these guys making Skype later on, these guys coming back to make Angry Birds, these guys making Spotify, these guys again making Clash of Clans, these coming back to make money. Initially named Skyper as an abbreviation of Skype peer to peer, the latter being the revolutionary technology that made Skype possible, as well as some other things from this era, Skype released in late 2003 looking like this, but in 2005 it changed to something a bit more familiar. Of all these services, Skype is by far the one I spent the most time on. I still remember going on calls with my cousins or friends from school to play some Minecraft or Counter-Strike, meeting new people and wasting my time calling Echo123, the Skype voice test that everyone called at least once. Also, Skype seems to be the first instance of me using Martifan as a username back in 2012, so that's interesting. I remember even using Skype to talk to my parents or close relatives before I got my first phone, which leads me to one of the main uses of Skype. Besides the instant messaging and voice over IP calls, you could purchase Skype credits in order to make actual phone calls or send SMS messages which helped define Skype's role as the all-in-one communication app at the time. It seems weird having to explain something that was so common at the time, but as Skype keeps being less and less popular, a lot of people barely remember using the service or have never used it at all. New kids are meeting their friends over Discord, companies have ditched Skype years ago, as Skype tried to become more and more like Zoom, despite parent company Microsoft having their own Zoom competitor, which then led Skype on a downfall, controlling only around 3% of the communication market share nowadays, as services like Slack, Discord and WhatsApp have taken its place, whether it is in the workplace or in the daily life. But those are the services that ended Skype, the once behemoth of the communication industry. How about we look at the services that came to an end due to Skype's popularity? There is no better example of this than Windows Live Messenger, or as it was originally called, MSN Messenger. From the name, it's clear who owned the service, and as we'll soon see, it's clear why one service led to the demise of the other. This service, like Skype, had quite a few different designs over its lifespan, and I'd like to focus on the one I remember the most, that being the Windows Live Messenger era from the mid to late 2000s. I never used this service a lot, I mean why would I? Skype had everything I wanted, but sometimes I'd forget my Skype password or there would be some glitch with my computer or Skype itself that made it so that I wasn't able to use the service, and when that happened, Live Messenger was always the place to go. I liked how similar it was to Windows 7's Arrow design, it looked perfectly at home in that OS, whereas Skype looked like some app that didn't have anything to do with Microsoft. And integration was something that was really defining for this service, I mean I remember Microsoft keyboards even having a messenger key so you could open the software in the easiest way possible. Though I think you can customize that key to open any program or at least other chat services as I remember using it for Skype as well. 
One of the things I remember the most from Live Messenger were the emojis, or emoticons as they were called back then. There's something so charming about these and similar ones you'd find on forums, and it's pretty cool that they're one of the things that remained in the smartphone era. But all good things come to an end, sooner or later, and the time for Windows Live Messenger came in 2013, as Microsoft didn't see any reason for two incredibly identical services to exist at the same time. Hmm. And well, I could talk about other services you guys know about, AOL Instant Messenger, Google Talk, ICQ, but I didn't really grow up with them, and after a while, they just start feeling and looking like the exact same thing, which, I mean, they are since they're essentially all trying to provide the exact same service. So, to avoid that, I'd like to take a look at a service I didn't even remember using, but I'm sure I did at least a few times. Sapo Messenger. Yeah, that's right, a Portuguese service. I'm gonna go a bit off track just to provide some context, as I doubt I'll ever have another chance to cover this. Sapu was basically the Portuguese Google. It actually predates Google by a few years, being created in the University of Aveiro back in 1995. And for a long time, they were a great alternative to Google here in Portugal. They had a search engine, mail, video sharing website, news, Yahoo Answers ripoff, all of that, though nowadays it's basically a news website with an email system. They had a little website catered towards kids, aptly named Sapu Kids, and man, I spent so much time here, watching videos, playing flash games, and installing stuff like Scratch. But anyway, as I said, during this time, Sapu released their own instant messaging service, Sapu Messenger. While I don't think I've ever used the software itself, it was also available on their email service, and I do remember chatting with some friends through that, so I did essentially use Sapu Messenger at least once. Sadly, there aren't a lot of screenshots of the service. I did manage to find an executable on the Wayback Machine, but it never manages to connect to the server, which makes sense, as it was shut down in 2019. Pretty cool that it lasted so long, but kind of a bummer that it didn't last long enough for me to use it properly. And yeah, that's basically it. I just wanted to take a look at some of these services and reminisce about a long gone era of the internet. I didn't really plan on making this video, I just went to one of those wheel decision websites, put all of my current video ideas and this was the one it landed on. Either way, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Share your favorite stories related to these services and I'll make sure to check them out. Like and subscribe to stick around and with all of that said, I hope you have a nice day.